Don't you wish that you could just go about your day with everything flowing seamlessly? You could be firing on all cylinders and fully embodied in the present moment. This doesn't just have to be a dream about productivity and performance though. Achieving this all day excellence in having higher highs and lower lows is possible when you start to live within your chronotype and understand your body's natural rhythms. And to perform your very best throughout the day, you want to be in tune with these natural rhythms that your body is telling you. So there are some internal cues and questions that we can go through that I'm going to include in this video. And you can either take notes as we go along or I'll include them in the description below so that you can ask these questions for yourself and start to better understand your body's natural rhythms and when you are best fit to perform. When is your energy, focus, and attention highest during the day? And are you somebody that likes to wake up early and get after it? Or do you like to work later into the evening when everyone else has gone to bed? You may already have an inclination of your body's natural rhythms. And before we get into talking about chronotypes, I want to show you this app that I've been testing out that's really cool and can help you to understand your body's natural rhythms a bit more if you don't have the best idea already. All right, so check this out. This app is called Rise Sleep, and it was something that just targeted me on an Instagram ad, but I thought it was pretty cool and I wanted to check it out and kind of show you because it works really well with the discussion of night owls, morning larks, where do you fall with your chronotype? And it shows you your sleep data, which you can get from like your Apple Watch or a Whoop Band or a Ring or whatever. And it will give you this pretty neat looking graph of what your energy levels are like throughout the day, where you find that you've got the best opportunity for peak activities. That could be things like filming videos or writing or doing deep work as well as when you can expect the dips during your day and some of the activities that you might want to do during those dips in order to bounce back get your energy back things like getting out in nature going for a walk or taking a nap and it'll also look at your optimal time for sleep and start to make suggestions based on your sleep debt as to when you should be going to bed, when you should be waking up. And part of what they say is that you can start to become more of a morning person through using their app. So a couple of things that I liked about this app are, I think it's really good if you don't have a great understanding of your natural energy rhythms to test it out. I think you can get seven days for free. You don't have to sign up if you've learned everything that you need to within that time frame, then go for it and just cancel the subscription and kind of test it out. Get some better understanding of your sleep patterns, better understanding of your energy rhythms through looking at those graphs. And a thing that I like is that it'll sync with your Google Calendar or Apple Calendar and give you a display of those time blocks for your peak activities, as well as your dips during the day so that you can kind of predict and hopefully, depending on where, where you're at in your life as far as scheduling things, you might be able to make use of that to schedule in your deep work or take breaks when you need to, to recover and perform your best throughout your daily cycle. I also like that it provides some tips and habits, suggestions that you can use to either boost your energy in the morning or wind down better at night. So I think it's really great that it offers these different suggestions as far as different habits that you can use for improving your circadian rhythm and improving your sleep quality. And then another thing that this app taught me and helped me to realize is that the first 90 minutes after we wake up, we've got this sleep inertia where we are supposed to be groggy. And it's funny because one of the goals that I had for myself for this year was to spring out of bed full of energy in the morning and it was never happening. And that's because it's not naturally supposed to happen because we have to overcome the sleep inertia and we can expect there to be some grogginess before we really start to wake up. 
And that's why when I'm coaching clients in their sleep and recovery, I always suggest that if they're subjectively tracking their sleep and giving them a score as far as how well they slept the night before, that they wait at least 90 minutes or a couple hours before waking to give themselves that score. And so if you don't understand your own peak performance timing, I think that this Rise Sleep app can be a really great tool to give you some insight that you can then start to tie in with your subjective measurements and understanding of your chronotype. So now let's talk a bit more about chronotypes. And there is quite a wide range of chronotypes, but most people often recognize it as the early birds or the morning larks and the night owls based on whether we like to rise and perform our best in the morning or we stay up late and can often do more cognitively demanding tasks towards the end of the day. And each of us has these natural peaks in our energy levels and dips that are based on this circadian rhythm and this chronotype. And so it's helpful to know this when it comes to timing your deep work sessions as well as any recovery time and any activities at the gym if you want to perform your very best. Do you get a second wind or another peak in energy at any point after a dip? Most of us naturally experience something like this towards the evening after that afternoon lull. And it's helpful to know this when you're timing things like creative tasks. I find that for myself, this is something that I've learned in the last couple of months, is that I tend to do my best focused, intense writing and deep work first thing in the morning or before I go to the gym. But in the afternoon, my brain's a little bit slower and it's a great time for me to do more creative work. Sometimes even things like filming videos or getting creative ideas for scripts and new projects that I'm working on can really work out well for me after I've had either a nap or just a drop in energy midday. I kind of get my second wind towards the evening. And one of the reasons for this when it comes to morning larks is this is the time of day where our executive functioning goes offline. So we're not in our heads as much and we're able to really get more of those creative ideas. Whereas when we need that high executive functioning, that's when you do those cognitively demanding tasks like editing or other things like that that need you to really be focused and intentional. But when it comes to being a night owl, your natural rhythms might look totally different from this. And maybe you come up with more of your creative ideas in the morning when you're still groggy and you find that you have your best workouts later in the evening and you can do more of that deep work and intentional activity after everybody else has gone to bed and you've got that quiet time to yourself again. And like I mentioned before, the majority of people fall into this early bird or night owl kind of categorization. But there is a vast range of other chronotypes. And so there are a few more questions that we can ask ourselves to start to develop more of the internal cues and understanding of when we will perform our best with different type of activities throughout the day. And we might not be able to change everything about our schedules, but in a perfect world, if you could, how would you structure your day in order to take the advantages of your peak times and dips into account to perform your very best. And this might not be something that you can achieve overnight, but think about how you can work towards this. If you could change your schedule in a very small way, what would you do in order to work towards your natural rhythms better? So give some thought to these questions and apply what you've learned to work towards optimizing your peak performance schedule. And I'll leave those questions in the description below once again, so that you can make use of them. And also leave a comment below on what you're already doing to take advantage of your natural rhythms. I'd love to know what kind of strategies you've got in place. And until the next video, find your love.